This is part 6 of the create the advanced drill down bar chart in chart.js yes. and here what we're going to do now is when we hover over here or you can see here this all works however what doesn't work here so far is the back button but what I want to do here is the hover effect because you can see here we hover here and this is resetting but this one is doesn't give us any effect here so what I want to do is I want to block or start to make this a hover effect all right so to do this we need to first register this as a function so we go all down at the bottom here this is very important and then in here we're going to say here ctx dot and then we're going to say add an event listener add event listener and this event listener will be based on not on hoover so you might say it's hoover but it's not let me explain why uh, this canvas is basically the hoover so if you hoover it will trigger the entire canvas but let's be honest if you hoover over here or here or there it is the canvas because the canvas is here it starts here the moment we hoover over this uh, blue colored highlighted box anywhere here is the hoover effect so that would mean that we're not working with hoover but we're working with mouse move meaning that when we move our mouse we get the x and y coordinates and if the x and y coordinates are matching with whatever our box is here same with this here basically this is just an x and y coordinates if we hover over it or if we move our mouse within the pixel amounts that we stated at that moment it becomes a mouse over or a, a cursor or a pointer cursor so that's what we're doing here exactly the same logic but sadly enough it's not possible because you're outside what we call the chart area and chart yes doesn't allow these kind of functionality they remove that functionality to simplify the code so that would mean that we need to build our own version here so don't worry it's not that complicated it just requires a solid foundation of uh, the canvas api however i'm going to show you exactly how to do this so the first thing we're going to do here of course so that's why i say here here's about mouse move so if you move the mouse here come on then we say here an event what is the event that we register is basically the mouse move and then in here, what we want to do here is we will say here a function is called the mouse move handler. And the mouse move handler will basically do only one thing. It will register, first of all, in the canvas, which is the CTX. The canvas is this one here. Where is it? The CTX here. And then secondly, we do comma and then it's the e for the event it's basically the event or a click or whatever you want in this case the mouse move so we need to do this to ensure that this functionality is working so what we're going to do now is we have this function it registers this and it sends us always the data basically this is a callback that sends the data into our function here so now we have our function and this function will do the following we're going to grab here what is the function is the mouse move and the function in here what i need is basically the ctx comma and then we can just call this this is basically the event here it moves it into here and let's say this would be just a mouse move very straightforward so we'll register these things so the thing what i want to do next is eventually start working on the code and uh, what we need to do here first of all we need to grab the x and y coordinates so that was the point here we can figure out and compare if we are on the right coordinates we should change basically like this if we are on this coordinates wherever the coordinates are it should change the item into a pointer luckily there is a very simple one so it's a constant x equals let's say here mouse move dot offset x and i'm going to show you exactly what this really does yeah this one there will be y and this is basically the value we need so what we can do here is the mouse move and then you can search for this specific item and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Console log, save, refresh. Then open up developer tab. Now you can see here we're moving this and then you can see here somewhere mouse move, movement, and then oh, we have it already, we just need to look for the offset, which is this. As you can see here, oh, let me refresh again. We will hover here over, very down in the bottom, we will probably hit somewhere here, mouse move offset of 
what is that? 699, which is correct because let's look at this. Those levels at the bottom, our tooltip shows that my chart has a width of 700. This is 700 pixels. Height here will be three, 350. You can see here if we are offset Y is 345. If you hover over it a bit more, you will find the full information or specifically, let's get this one. Put in there. Save this, refresh. Hover here. Oh, hover. Where's the console log? Make sure you have the console log active. And you can see here, we're going down here. We see almost 350, 349. Fair enough. One pixel difference. I accept the error margin of this. All right, so we've got this now. We have the X and Y value. So what we can do now is just easily compare. How do we compare this? So this is a very important issue. So now I'm going to use a special trick. And this trick, we have to go all here up. I'm going to start working on this. We just made our coordinates. Constant. And then here I'm going to say coordinates. And these coordinates will be very important later on. We'll be needing this. But I'm going to use this. And this is basically what we call a global object or global variable. Or in other words, host, hoisting. Hoisting basically means raising or uh, ra raising a flag. So what we're really doing is we put a flag on a flagpole and then we push it, we pull it and it will slowly go up. We call it hoisting a flag. So in our case, we want to do these coordinates here. We want to save these objects here and then they might have value or they might have none value. And then we want to overwrite them with whatever value we have in the function. And later on, we can just grab these values consistently in our different functions. Because you can see here how we were able to, to move data in a function was always using these kind of tricks here. Like this, this is like a callback. Yeah, and then we had another one as well, if I'm not mistaken, here with the browser, we had a callback uh, trick. But now we are stri we're stuck with a trick. We cannot do a trick anymore. So I'm going up here, sorry. And here, we're going to say constant. Then we just say top. And this top will be equal to zero. We just set them on zero as default. Uh, comma, and then we do another one. We have in total of four items. So we say top, bottom, left, right. So if we save this here, nothing will happen really. But this here is able to give us the information why we need to do this. So uh, let me show you here. Where are we? Where is the function? Sorry, we have a lot of functions right now. You can see this will be, by the way, it's related to this one here, just to be clear. But here, um, the uh, where is that? The, not to change chart, the mouse over event. How do we know the top, bottom, left, and right position that is in here? Well, remember, we assign that here up when we draw the bottom. Here. But we have here certain things. This one is not what we need. We need the event the object. So what I want to do here, just before the restore, remember, restore will... will we set the default value. So I want to go in here. And here basically what I'm going to do here now is go and assign value. And the assigned value will be based on our coordinates dot whatever we want. So we have here, this is like, this is exactly the same as the data structure as you can see here. If you want to pin, pinpoint this top, you can have brow, like this one, browser data bra, dot browser would pinpoint this one. Your coordinates dot top, coordinates dot bottom. But of course, this here is, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, array value. So we might need to do a certain item on this. So just to make sure, I want to do here a console log. Say coordinates. If I save this, refresh, and then we get a lot of this loading, and then I know that this loading is starting to really uh, give us a uh, tough time to read it. So I'm going to remove the console log here. So, and then we go back to our coordinates. There you are. Save this, refresh. And all right, so it loads and loads a lot of these information. And you can see here, this is basically the item here. And to get here, it's just the bottom itself. So we don't need to do anything special. There's no array in here. I realize why, because we didn't use the curly braces up. So that's fine. So what we can say here is the following. We will say your top coordinates or coordinates dot top equals whatever the value is. So I'm just going to put in all four of these. 
then after we're going to look at it and just pay attention now because this will be tricky this will be bottom this will be left this will be right so now we have this so we want to look for the specific uh, border box I guess the border box is the most updated version with all the information all right so when you look at the stroke rack here we have all of these items this here is basically the left value so that's left so we can grab this one here uh, yeah right yeah that is correct so this is the left one here so make sure you put in the coordinates in the curve the right location then we have this one remember this was the y value or the, the top value so we go here into top say five this one is the width yes the width of of the 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 width of x meaning it is not the right side no what it is because this is the width of it so we need to calculate what is the official positioning of that how do we calculate that text width minus right and the reason why right was 700 because it is a full full width but of course I don't want to put in 700 because if the chart would be smaller as we resize this can change so we're not hard coding this we only hard code the border and the text because that is the only thing that we need to be hard coded but everything else is soft coded that when we refresh or change it or resize it will work and recalculate everything correctly so I'm going to say here write minus text width so once we have this the next one will be the bottom so what is the bottom well if this is 20 in uh, the width what is that this is the height of y so that's 20 so what we need to do is top which is 5 plus bottom which is 20 so in total 25 all right so now if I save this then refresh all right that works and then I get all these weird shapes here fair enough all right so now it works but we don't see anything yet here so let's cut this out and go back to the other item because we have the information now and this information will be stored now elsewhere or we will retrieve it somewhere else which is on our mouse move here so on our mouse move you will have now basically this information let's look at this save this refresh all right this is the mouse move and the mouse move will show you the information that we just had remember we first set it as default at zero and then we only extract it based on the coordinates of this so now we have this here so we can do now our calculation so what I want to do here is basically make an if statement. So to do this if statement, we can make it simple by putting it left, right, top, and bottom. So uh, if you want to do that, that is fine. We can do that here. Maybe we can say this, or else we can say coordinates dot left, coordinates dot right, etc., etc. Maybe that would be fine as well. So, but if you want it short, you can do left, right, and and, uh, and all the information here. Well, let me show you. So we say x x should be not bigger and x we're referring to the horizontal border or line or area here and the x should not be more or should be more than left which is basically this line here but not more than the right side so we say here x should be larger than coordinates left and then we say here and which is the second condition x should be smaller than coordinates right and then what we need to do again is and we have the y value should be and the y is the top and bottom so the top should be it should be more than the top and lesser than the bottom so almost same here so we say here the following top I said um, more than sorry top all right and y should be smaller than the coordinates bottom so once we did this we have all of this here and this should be fine and what we want to do here of course because this is an if statement so what will be the if statement here is the following then we say here, of course canvas or 
but you can even use CTX, it doesn't matter. This, uh, I guess here, um, most likely this should be CTX, sorry, because the CTX here was also matched in here, but this could be also canvas. So if you use canvas here, make sure it's canvas here, but basically the reference is to the canvas, so maybe just use canvas, fine. Let me say your style dot cursor, very similar, say pointer. All right, so then we are here, and then we say here, of course, else, if this is not the case, if it is not in there, in that case, I want to say here, default value. So once we did this, semicolon here, semicolon there, save this. Refresh, and now let's look at it. Do we see anything here? No, it doesn't work yet. All right, so we have to just check what am I missing here. Uh, the item here, that is this. Do we have any issue? All right, so let me just quickly check. All right, so after I check, I realize I might be uh, needing something else. Am I correct? Well, let's try this because I think this should be it. All right, sorry about this. I realize our code has a tiny flaw in there. No, or let me your code, our calculation. Let me show you here. Look, you can see here, I'm hovering over this, and then it goes like this. Yes, so this would mean the um, the, the the pointer area is just too small. And I really figured out already what it is, because it's basically this here should be the left uh, to the right side at all. So it's all at the back here. So if I go back here up, I need to go to the calculation of the right side. Let's see where that is. Coordinates right. This just should be removed with the text width, so we get the exact width here. That is the right side. So if I save this now, check. There we are. All right. So that's it. So now you can see here we have this, but we're not done yet. We didn't even yet make a clickable button. So next part, we're going to focus on the clickable button.